Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I had a request to talk about the fuel pressure regulator on an F-150 truck and how to deal with fuel pressure. Now this is a little bit more complex than a vacuum operated fuel pressure regulator because there's a lot more involved. I printed off some sheets from my service manual that I got from emmanuel.com, I believe it is. And I'm gonna show you the theory behind it. Sorry, it's emmanuelonline.com. I've had the service manual for probably four years or so. It's come in handy quite a bit. First understand this, we need to see where the power comes from. So from the fuel pump relay, it looks like one wire comes from the PCM and the other one comes from a fuse. So we're going to trace the power source down to where it's going to go. And we're following along the schematic and it goes to the fuel inertia shutoff switch. That's where it leads to follow the wire down and it goes to the fuel pump driver module, which is a white wire. What's nice about these sheets is that you can print them off and then take them out to the garage. It makes it really awesome for diagnostic testing. So this is the fuel pump driver module plug. And the only wires that I'm going to need is pin number five, the VPWR fuel and the power ground. So just so that you know, the fuel pump does not run 100% at all times which most vehicles probably do. The fuel pump driver module provides the duty cycle to the fuel pump. So the F-150 runs at about 45 PSI on average, which is around 50% power. So understand how that works is that fuel rail, pressure, temperature sensor, voltage, and pressure specifications. That would be this sensor right here on the 5.4 runs to 2006. It may vary on different models, but it's right on the fuel rail. So it operates off voltage, as you can see. So like I said, I go off about 45 PSI. So the voltage is probably going to be around 3.2 volts. I'll see if my scanner can pick that up. And then you can see, I'm not sure how the temperature comes into play. I haven't really dug too deep into it. You may find this interesting fuel rail pressure sensor. Electronic returnless fuel system concern causes the sensor to indicate a lower pressure than actual. The PCM commands a higher duty cycle to the fuel pump driver module. FPDM causing high fuel pressure system rich at all airflow so i got my scanner so i'm going to hook it up and see what we can read i just need to find our right data here so this is the data we wanted to see fuel pressure is at 39 psi fuel pressure desired 39 psi fuel rail pressure transducer status no fault fuel rail temperature is 39 temperature volts 2.26 we're in closed loop fuel pump is on it says fuel pump percent is 21% is that we're running. Does it change if we rev it up? Probably would see a change if we put it under a load. So according to our sheet, we're right in the ballpark. If I was at 39 PSI like I was, we're about 2.7 volts. So we're exactly where we need to be according to this chart. So now I'm going to show you where the fuel inertia switch is. A lot of people don't know if you get into 
an accident and it won't restart or if you're out wheeling and you hit something and your fuel shut off kicks in I'm going to show you where that is it's in the kick panel on the passenger side now on the passenger side on the kick panel if you want to know where the inertia switch is it's that little module right there with the red top and if that's popped it would be a little button sticking up from the very top it's actually soft so you can put your finger on it and touch it so if that's tripped, you're going to have a crank no start because the fuel driver is not getting any power. So according to this, I need to test the white for power and it looks like black and yellow will be the ground. Get my favorite tool, the power probe. Nice is that the power probe comes with an extremely long cable. So underneath that's your fuel pump driver module yeah there's the wire right there the second one I'm gonna see if my terminal will fit in there so I verify ground is good so now I got the power probe plugged into the white wire I'll try to set the camera up here and I'll go turn the ignition on but I'm not sure what it'll read for power, our voltage. So we're done with that. We saw 12 volts come in. Well, of course, if I was to back probe it and then hook up to the one that went out to the fuel pump, it would probably give us the voltage correspondingly to the duty cycle it was acting for. But uh, if you have one of these trucks, it's always good to have a look at the uh, fuel pump module too from time to time. And you can see this is the updated version that has a gap but you never know if it starts corroding or rusting behind and all of a sudden it'll leave you dead in the water but I think for a lot of the issues it's going to come down to no power be a relay fuse between power distribution going through the inertia switch if you got power going through there you should have power going down to the fuel pump module and if you have power coming out of the fuel pump module then there's probably a pretty good chance that the fuel pump is shot if it's not pumping fuel but then there could be other issues like bad ground at the fuel pump and numerous other things but this is just kind of a short breakdown it's not as easy as a regular fuel pressure regulator that just runs off a vacuum this is a lot more complex because it uses the PCM and a bunch of variables to calculate the duty cycle of the fuel pump. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Something a little bit more simpler.